be the fucking straight. Niggas on the block packing for the A. If them niggas slide through, they gon' be the C. This we been on the half, getting super gay. Gotta win, can't never lose. Cause if a nigga lose, I'ma have to pull. Chopping up your block with the fucking toe. Laying niggas down, hide me on the nose. FL niggas bought it all. Welcome back to the Town Business Podcast Show. I am your host, J Stone Rue. A.K.A. Stoner from the Town, and I am here with none other than actor and what did you what did you win something for for that movie you did? I ain't win nothing. Okay, okay. I ain't win nothing. Rapper, actor, Compton Menace. You know what I'm saying? What's up with you, man? What's happening? What's the deal? What's up with you, man? What's What's saying, up, Brian? What's Brian? Yeah, yeah, man. What's going on? Shit, man, you know, shit, uh, you know, just been, you know, doing my little podcast shit, you know, my, my new show and shit, yeah, got so you on there and shit. Friday too. Thank you, man, Friday. thank you, thank you, man, you know, I had to, uh, do other shit, you know what I'm saying, because, you know, I was, I was a rapper still, I'm still a rapper, but, uh, you know, I'm doing both now, yeah. you know what I'm saying, rapping, and podcast, got other bags. exactly, all the bags, you know what I'm saying, you know how the homies do it, you know what I'm saying, you gotta get all the bags, my nigga, you know what I'm saying. So uh, did you did you did you hear the Chris Brown new track? Nah, no, you didn't hear it. Nah, I ain't gonna lie, I ain't heard it. Yeah. What's, so why you asked me that though? What's that? It? Somebody was telling me about that and shit. There was a uh, couple people telling me about that. They was like, "Did you hear Chris Brown new track?" You know, like, what was he doing? What was it, what was it about? Uh, they was talking about how he uh, how he say his homie uh Bobby Love got shot and some other shit and some other shit and I was like man I don't know you gotta hear this. yeah I, I didn't even listen to it yet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying but that's what I heard and shit you know what I'm saying Niggas was, you know, yeah, that's that what was. my my fans are saying and a couple of my relatives are telling me like my people and shit and a couple yeah. of fans are telling me like you ain't hear that I was like oh, I ain't hear that I gotta hear it though that's unfortunate to happen about it, but I gotta hear that record for sure yeah yeah man that shit was crazy man what's the name of it you know no, I don't even know the name. I ain't even I ain't even heard it yet. But that's what you know. I was saying people was telling me. That's all. That's you have you heard it? Cause. Yeah, hell no. Nah. You got to put that in the uh, caption on there. After you say after you say that, you got to put that up there so they can see the hit hit the record now. Cause I want to hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit, cause I ain't, I ain't, I ain't heard none of that shit, man. But what you what you uh where 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 you where you where you grow up at? I grew up right there in the middle of Compton. One with Tenant Rose Crans, you feel me, as they would say, our family, we call our family Fruit Town, you feel me, we, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, you're part of family, mm-hmm. we're both part of the same family, but you know, same shit, ain't nothing changed, it wasn't everyday childhood, we could have grew up anywhere and it would have been, you know, a normal upbringing to us. Yeah. But you know, it's a blessing to grow up, where I grew up at, the people I grew up with, and big homies and other people I had, influences I had, you feel me? Yeah, so you, so as you do, I didn't I didn't grow up in the hood. Mm-hmm. I, I grew up in the mobs, mm-hmm. but my family is from the hood. From the fruits, yeah. My all my 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 daddies and my uncles they from the fruit. Mm-hmm. So that's what. Well, I initially I didn't even know I was getting put on fruit. Yeah. I literally, I'm trying to give, give you the honey with you, nigga. I didn't know nothing about gangs, nothing. I just fuck with the homie G yeah. Rail. And G-Rail. Baby Lucky and fucking Dre, nigga, and it was my homies and shit. So I was Free like, Dre. fuck it. So I was like, nigga, I'm getting put on the fruits because of them. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know where my daddy was from or none of that. I knew my daddy was something like blood oh, and shit because yeah, he wore yeah. red and shit and all the other shit. But I didn't know where the fuck he was from. Right. I'm like, shit. So you I got put on. Niggas did it. Exactly. But I was living in Looters, but all of, nigga, Big June, Ray Ray, nigga, yeah. gang of the older homies used to be over there all the time while right. I lived down on St. Louis Street. I didn't so, know so that shit. You was sleep. I was sleep like a motherfucker. No, I you, tell you. No, your pops is G, so you was sleep on nigga. everything. So pops was a good nigga. Exactly. He exactly. He kept all that shit away from me. I didn't know what the fuck he was. I was mm-hmm. like, nigga, I don't know what this nigga. Is. I seen him with a gun one time and other shit, but he never told me he was no blood or none of no shit. See, like your nigga, pops had some money. I let you know you. Baby. Oh, we'll do. Nigga don't know. You feel me? The street street kids don't know nothing. Pops had that bag. You feel me? Homie yeah, no, no, my dad, then my dad was getting hella money, nigga. Nigga yeah, was knocking on my door bro. all night, nigga, that's all why, the time. That's hey. why you didn't know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 where your daddy at? God damn, nigga, it's one in the morning, two in right. the morning, nigga. 
Now you know. That light damn. was on with that light, but with that light, with that porch light, man. Now yeah, you know. Exactly. That's why I was like, God damn, nigga. Everybody know my daddy. Everybody in the neighborhood knew my daddy. Oh, yeah, nigga, that's Booty Boo's son and yeah. shit. I'm like, nigga, how the fuck you know me? I don't even know you. Girl, I got a question for you now, then. What's the question? How was it growing up with the influence of who your father was and how he tried to separate it with you? bringing you up okay so i grew up with well basically my daddy had a reputation and my uncle because my uncle is is elmo from the hood yeah. james so both of them kept that away from me yeah facts i knew both of them had like reputation type shit when i went around both you know, of them you just couldn't fuck with them niggas. exactly because yeah. i used to go to my uncle's house all the time i used to walk over his house he lived on castlegate i used to walk over there from the looters mm -hmm. To where he's that still was the looters, but I didn't know that. I always thought it was a different hood. Mm -hmm. I used to walk over there and be at his house and shit. But the whole time, I never knew neither one of these niggas was game banger. I just knew they had a certain type of respect from yeah. everybody. Like, don't nobody fuck with these niggas and nice. shit and all that shit. And they like niggas know their names and shit. If I tell them, nigga, oh, this is my uncle or this yeah. is my daddy, they be like, oh, oh yeah, nigga, I know who you talking about and shit. And it's crazy. It be like that too. Every like. Nigga that was in the streets and had kids, you feel what I'm saying? Like, they had to separate that shit, bro, because yeah. they wanted some, you know, other shit. And I always wondered why, because I was like, he kept me away from that shit so much. Like, I didn't know. Yeah, you know why? Me. Your ass got shot to two different times waiting on somebody. <laughs> exactly. I know why so now, that's but why, I was yeah. thinking they should have told me. Because, no, he told me in other senses, because he told me after he knew I got put on. My uncle told me. Yeah. He was like, man, he just was shaking his head. He yeah. was just like, you don't know what you didn't done. So I'm like, man, what, what you talking shit? about? It is there no too fast <laughs> for you. you. You made it, nigga, shit. You, you still breathing. You got your podcast. You got the show and shit going. So bless yeah, but it took me some some learning, too. You know what I'm saying? Because everything takes time, bro. You know what I'm saying? Everything takes time. Like you said, everything. you got to take time to learn, take right. time to figure shit out and all kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? This life, like, I learned it's like the corporate job world in real life you feel me everybody don't want to go to work for two weeks before you get paid mm -hmm. everybody don't want to go work hard and slave for a motherfucker before you, them two weeks come before you get your check you get what i'm saying before the yeah. first two weeks come nigga trying to get gas to get to work mm -hmm. probably borrow money to eat for you know for the house and then two weeks come the check come now you get in your flow within the next six months and now you got your shit going but don't nobody want to put in that work you feel me? Exactly. That's the main thing. But us, you see, we always going to put our hands in everything. We can get it into and make the best out of it. Have you ever been in a situation where anybody tried to, like, shoot you and use in the neighborhood? Nah. Nah? Well, yeah. I have. Enemies and shit like that, but they ain't, you know, I won't per say per se me, just us. You get what yeah. I'm saying? But at the end of the day, back then... It was like, um, I didn't think about that shit how I think about it now, mm -hmm. basically. You feel me? That shit was just like, you know, we gonna have a shootout or whatever, then go That's to the next was. block. That's you what, what it was, was like to me before I got shot. Yeah. Then after go I got shot, block. I was like, nah, this shit ain't the game. <laughs> oh, wow, so that shit hurt. But I was, I was blessed. I was, I was blessed. Even coming up where we came out from, the big homies, you know, Rick and all them niggas, they always asked me, like, what you doing right here? Why you ain't? at practice are you feel me that city diamond tucker see me i i thought blood was just i thought blood was just like had nothing to do because i'm walking to uh, enterprise park or camping at the park to go swimming and i'm blood mm -hmm. to see me while i'm walking there pick me up take me there and he'll see me while i'm walking back and take me that was one of them good homies blood. yeah but i didn't realize what he was really in the streets doing yeah, he trooping, looking for enemies, nigga. Hold yeah. the jet, hold the hood down. A lot of homies just oh, around the whole set of shit. Facts. See him all the time, like oh, I see this nigga five, six times rolling Facts. around this motherfucker. But them the type of niggas like they didn't never have me like hey, go go shoot somebody, go sell some drugs, go do. They didn't never tell me this type of shit. They didn't never influenced me with that at all. You feel me? They always told me to go do what they knew I was good at and influenced yeah. me to do that. So you know, shout out to my, shout out to the homies, man. Everybody ain't got you no know, good homies like that. Yeah, man. Uh, Kiki, man, that nigga, that was nigga. 
that shit sad in my heart when he ain't passed away and shit. Yeah, Kiki Ro. Only nigga, yeah, Kiki Ro. My dog. Only nigga, pick me up, blood, drive me home, cause I and no homies take me home, cause they know I had a gun. They like, Thanks. blood, I can't take you home. You got I for sure wouldn't home. take your ass out. Home home. <laughs> home. He's like, blood, you little homie, I love you, blood, but you got that gun on you and shit, blood, I can't take you. The homies wouldn't give me no rides home to the because they know I had a gun on me. I just always have a gun. But he's like, blood, we love you, Jay Stone. Mm-hmm. We can't take you home, blood. I ain't trying to have the police pull me over, blood. I go to nice. jail. So I, I really, I'm, I'm a real nigga, so I'm like, all right, cool, blood. But Kiki was the only nigga like, blood, come on, blood. <laughs> nice, I nice. jump in blood car, he take me right home. <laughs> come on. All nice. right, nigga, I holla at you, my nigga. I love you, nigga. All right, blood, my nigga Kiki. So when, yeah. when I moved to Reno Valley, that's when he, he had got, you know, killed and shit. Nigga, I was so fucking sad, bro. I was Hell yeah, Kiki was a good nigga. And he was an innocent soul, I would say. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, an innocent soul. He, was he so wasn't sad. like everybody yeah, else. Like another reason why I was so sad. I was like, bro, Kiki wasn't even like that, bro. Facts. Kiki wasn't even on no shit like that. Like, I mean, no matter what he was like, because, you know, he, he, he was you know, a street nigga, too. No, but, but he wasn't like he, had, he got an innocent soul. He wasn't like nobody else, bro. Like, yeah. You get me? And I ain't trying to say the homie was like no buster or nothing, but I'm trying to say like the homie wasn't like mm-hmm. trying to like, you know, co out and pop niggas and all that yeah, shit. Yeah, facts, so facts. It was like, he so got it a heart. Like, he thought with yeah, his heart. Exactly. You know what time was. So for him to die the high way he got killed, I was like, like, bro. Like, bro. But yeah, blood kill. Man, countless homies, bro, like shit. The ones that like really looked out and was fucking fucking with a nigga, you feel me? Mm-hmm. That's fucked up. But you know one thing, right? I had put this shit in a song too. When I was uh I think I was like sixteen, I had showed my pops a picture. Everybody in there, Cheeks in there, Verndale. Yeah. Everybody, bro. He like, oh, these your these your homeboys, huh? I'm like, yeah, it's my dogs right here, Pops. You feel me? Popping the shit with it. He said, yeah, nigga, by the time you get 30, nigga, half of these niggas gonna be dead or in jail, nigga. You heard me? And I didn't mm-hmm. think about that shit until like I was about 32, 33. And nigga, bro, I was right. You feel me? Why my daddy tell me the same dead shit? Dead or in jail, bro. My daddy tell me the same shit. Facts. All these niggas you hang with, I just bring them to the house. I just bring them mm-hmm. to the house. And the carvers. Yeah, he a street nigga, so he live what? What you got all these little niggas over here for? But I had a gun, so I was like, nigga, that's nigga who was nigga start doing something, we gonna start tripping. But you know, even like that aspect, how you move around like that, like, so I played sports and shit, so I was cool in all, you know, a lot of crib neighborhoods, cause I got, I went to Compton High School and shit like that. You feel me? Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask you. How do you? uh you know, uh, switch up from uh, being a basketball player to a rapper. Well, since you was a, such a good basketball player, yeah, I know you was a nice basketball player. You yeah. wasn't a, a weak basketball player. Yeah, nah, it was just realistically, I had got football scholarships, and then I didn't have my SAT, so I had went to junior college. But while I'm playing for the junior college. I just lost the love for I just lost the love for that shit, bro. The junior like, college did you go to? Southwest. Okay. You feel me? I just lost the love LA. for it, like yeah. Okay. So like coming up as you know as an athlete, you had that love to get that energy to be first order to hit the hardest or to make the best catch, right? Mm. I lost the love for that shit, bro. To where I didn't I didn't even want to be there. You get me? And that's where I made my transition from playing sports into going into the entertainment because I was. Already around, you know, game in the Black Wall Street and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say that too. I remember you was with uh, game and shit at first. Hell yeah, so that was around that same time right there to where I was. I thought you was fucking. finna blow there, nigga. Really though, no, nigga. I was like, damn, the whole ain't finna be bragging yeah. like a motherfucker. Nah, you shit. know, it's crazy. I was just in a good situation. I ain't even rapping nothing. Mm-hmm. I ain't rapping nothing. I was just the street nigga, the muscle, basically. You feel oh, what I'm okay. saying? But I fell in love with the music once I got to see. Like, this shit is real. You get me? Mm-hmm. I got the trap. Go to France, go to Africa, go to New Zealand, Australia. I'm like, dang, this nigga from Compton. This shit is for yeah, real. Yeah, yeah. You, you being from Compton, we, we being Compton. from the same neighborhood, it's like, I ain't right. never seen no shit like this, you know? So, <laughs> so that gave me, that made me fall in love with music and shit. Like, my parents was, 
My pops had me when he was 50. He died at 86. You feel me? I'm 36 now. Wow. So, you know, oh, so I was, was one of them. Yeah. One of them dude that I'm, a, I'm an yeah. old nigga. Exactly. So, you yeah. know what I mean? We had an old father. Like. Right. So, I, nigga, my household wasn't no music, no hip hop going on in that bitch. It was old school music. I know. That's all you heard was some old Hearing shit. Hearing motherfucking like E and J and, uh, you know, uh, you know, the bookie joint shit. That's what my pops ran. But at the end of the day, I forgot all the time I was talking about my motherfucking pops, but it's just a. a it's talking a, about you uh, being a basketball player. Yeah, nah. Into I just, yeah, I had lost the love for that shit and I fell in love with this just to see how, you know, somebody got to do this shit. I got to travel the world without playing sports or being in the Army. You feel me? And that's a blessing. Oh, you went to the Army too? No, I did it without it. Oh, okay. You feel me? Every time a nigga leave the hood and go overseas, he in the Army. Yeah, or yeah, playing yeah. basketball or something. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, that, that was all a blessing though. But yeah, I wasn't a rapper, bro. I was just a street nigga, bro. Like, I get thousand dollars for knocking a nigga out. That was me. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? Oh wow! So they had the death row contract still going on. Huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. So you put a nigga to bed, you get thousand dollars. Slam, you see him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how it was though. But that really gave me my, and I got to see a lot of shit. Yeah. Just um. I got to be with the game while he was biggest biggest rapper in the world. Yeah. I got to see all the you know the good shit, the bad shit mm. before it was even my time. You feel me? So I feel like that helped structure how I move around and shit like that. You get me with yeah. relationships and business because I know that shit is it's longer than your thoughts today. You feel me? So I think that helped me cope with thinking and dealing with weird ass shit that be going on in the industry. How did you get the role two tone and uh well what was that um straight out of Compton. Straight out of Compton. How you get that role? Um, really, you know John T. Mm -hmm. He real close with F. Gary Gray, so F. Gary Gray told him. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, F. Gary Gray told him that he would just wanted me in the movie. You feel me? Like my image. So yeah. Shout out to John T. You know we made it happen just like that. I mean, you did a good, you did a good ass job. We both were there, remember? The scene, the bus scene by the creek. Y'all yeah, talking about the creek. Facts. Yeah. And Palmer Block. Yeah. <laughs> and Face was there. Yeah. And that's yeah. The, that was crazy too, cause last time we was there was when Game and Dr. Dre was right there, in that same spot. You feel me for his shit? And our base camp was at Compton High School. That wasn't Palmer Block, cause that's, that was Cedar Block. No, no that's, that's Palmer that's Block. Palmer. That's Palmer. Okay. And we don't get Cedar Block is across the canal. Um, yeah, that was, that man, I liked it, that scene, man. I, cause first, really, really, cause I'm being honest, I didn't expect you to do as good of a job that you did. <laughs> you know what I'm cause I'm like, you a new actor. So I thought you was gonna be like, I'm like, all right, I'm probably see the homie. He probably ain't gonna really act that good, you know what I'm saying? You did a fucking nigga. I was like, wow, nigga. Man, I that's appreciate the homie it. blood. <laughs> Man, I appreciate it. I was it, like, nigga, that's the homie two tone, nigga. <laughs> nah, I just I'm off here, nigga. So even even like that type of shit, I keep it on the level. Like I was in probably two or three movies before that one. Mm -hmm. But one thing I learned about, like when I was shooting straight out of Compton, I was still going to the studio recording. Nobody in the studio knew I was shooting a uh, shooting movie. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I've been in the studio with you too. Yeah. So I did it like that because, like, it's a movie. Like, they cut your part out, but you telling everybody, like, I'm in a motherfucking movie. Exactly. Everybody yeah, look exactly. at it. Like, <laughs> you was only in there for two seconds. Yeah, right. <laughs> so that's why I just just keep that shit to myself and just work. You feel me? Because, you know, the editors, this is, a good, this is a good thing. But that was all a blessing, man. And it's full circle too, because my big homie, and it was in a position to put me in the position. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it, I wouldn't have liked it no, no other way. Yeah, man, I was going to say, man, John T, man, that nigga put, man, he, he, man, he yeah. got up there, man. He yeah, put he niggas in. some oh, shit. Yeah, I was going to say, big homie, bro. Hey, big John T, he been a big homie, man, for a yeah. long time, man. Facts. For Facts. real, though. Since I was a little nigga, I remember that nigga being a real G homie. Yeah. Nigga. I used to buy Doty from that nigga when Doty was hot, nigga. <laughs> 
every morning before I went to high school, me and homie asked Ruth to go to that nigga house. <laughs> Be knocking on his door like. As well would say, on the fingers. On the fingers, nigga. His uh, mom used to come outside. Hold on, let me go get John. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She go get a receipt. What y'all want? Hey, nigga, look at the dub, nigga. Right. Spoke that shit, go to weed. Nigga, we was high as hell. That shit, shit was fire. I ain't never seen no weed like that after. What what they do with the Doty, man? You don't know see, what they did with the Doty? Nah, y'all, y'all be smoking that, the, the Zaza shit. Nah, f- no, fuck the Zaza well, back, shit. Where the Doty at, back man? Back in my hustling day, the Zaza was the cheap shit. Yeah, basically, exactly. Oh, gee. This Zaza shit is cheap shit. Yeah, they tricked everybody to make them feel like that that's good weed because it smells, it tastes different. Mm-hmm. That's some bullshit weed. And it's OG, so that's what you had, OG. So that's what the Doty was, OG. OG. Oh, my. But the taste of it was like Zaza, my oh, nigga. Oh, no. Nigga, you know it. You remember the taste of that shit? That <laughs> shit was tropical, my nigga. That shit was not no regular taste. Once you hit it, it's like, oh my gosh. See? I taste the whole tropical, oh, like just, oh man. <laughs> just the whole tropical world, like, oh my God. And it's hitting right. too, it's hard, hitting uh, you right in your chest. You're like, right. oh wait, this is, this is the kill. I think the white man took that away. Oh. <laughs> he was like, yeah, let me get that from y'all. So was you satisfied with the overall scene in, in Straight Outta Compton? Speaking on how you how it looked after it was all said and done. I mean, even if let's just say I wasn't satisfied with, like, yeah, I would be satisfied with it. It did a lot for me. You feel me? Like, as far as uh, projecting my image, you know, it did it, uh, and, and giving me other roles too. It did a lot for me. It was a blessing. It was a blessing. So how did you uh get it get to the song with uh Chris Brown put on? Um, how did y'all get? How did y'all come together to do that song? The homie Wax Star. Wax Star, okay. Yeah, the okay. homie Wax Star. You know him and Chris Brown's real close. Yeah. So, basically, I'm you know shit, nigga. We need come on, let's get it. And, you know he made that it happen. That was a good ass song too. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? He made it happen. We got to go on tour. One hell of a. Oh y'all went on tour for that song? Uh, yeah. Wow. So, you know, that was all the... Did y'all go, like, overseas? No, I didn't go overseas with him. Okay. But we did, um, like, 34, 34 states. Oh, sh- Big tour Might as well us. go overseas. <laughs> yeah, they thought it was Yeah, I went all around America, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, went all Had to spin that bag, nigga. We on a tour bus, too, this time, nigga. Oh, man. Had to spin that bag. But that was a blessing, though, bro. Like, everything that I do, like, it's, it's business. You feel what I'm saying? If it's gonna make us some money you get me not try and separate it like that so yeah that's how we calculate that's how that's how we just calculated the whole situation got the record got the video shot went on a promotion tour before that then went on tour with him you feel me so mm-hmm. it, did, it did real good good thing i want to know if, if you want to speak on it what what who what we got chris brown in the bank of the hood Cause that's a lot of niggas be asking. Wax star, <laughs> okay. Wax star, everybody. Okay, cause everybody be asking me, man, who, who, who? Am I? I don't start nobody to doing nothing. <laughs> hey man, that's why I said, <laughs> hey people just be around me, they like my swag, but I think he started yeah. banging on his own. Yeah. <laughs> I never told him to do nothing. And I ain't gonna even say wax star, but you know what? They wax wackers, they he real close friends with yeah you know. so just being around him and shit. You, you know, are you know you know you gonna pick up the lingo. Nigga got swag, nigga got money. You know, you around something too long, you gonna be coming. Yeah. So that's what you know. He must have been around it for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> that nigga, he wear the SF hats on the little stage. Yeah. And shit. I, I loved it that shit though. When I seen him with the SF hat on with the original one. Facts. I said, Oh my gosh, people don't even know what that means. They don't. <laughs> I was looking like, Oh my god. Like you a San Francisco? Hey, no. Man, he's a San not a San Francisco Forty Nine er fan. Stanford strictly gross. He did it on the main stage. Oh my god, millions of people seen this. They was like, Oh my god, he likes the San Francisco Forty Nine ers. Nah, don't. that's a set. He don't. He love the hood, my nigga. Uh, at what age was you when you got put on? We ain't talking about that either. We ain't talking about that either? No, I'm going to tell you why. So now, listen. All right, we're doing business, and we already say what we say in the records, right? Mm-hmm. So nowadays, they, if they want to fuck with us and do anything, they can take the innocent out of it 
and make us some as a Rico or something like that. Young yeah. You know what I'm saying? So even in my music, I probably represent where I'm from, but I talk about the positive shit. I don't ever talk about, you know, in my videos, I don't have no guns in them. Yeah. Right? You barely see a female in my videos. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, that ain't the type of shit I'm pushing. But from 2008, when I was dealing with a uh, federal investigation with who I was dealing with, conspiracy case, I stopped doing a lot of shit then because I got to see that the police know everything already. Mm -hmm. They really know everything. So now they just find ways to get niggas up out of here. And that'll be easy for me to say and do stupid shit like that so they can put it together and make it seem like it's something. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So that's why I be on that type of shit because it's a different game. It ain't just about showing how street we is no more. That shit turned into showing how stupid we is. You feel know I me? Mean? Mm -hmm. Facts. Okay. Facts. So since we ain't gonna it's talk the family. About that. <laughs> <laughs> it's the family. Hey, they they have been on some crazy some crazy stuff with that shit. You know. Yeah, no matter how much money you got. We, exactly. Guess yeah, what? Was right I'm pretty sure fucked off. He was gonna be <laughs> out of jail the next couple hours. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Where he at right now? Still. He don't know how serious that shit is. That's why I hope, you know, find some way to, I ain't gonna say find some way, cause, you know, not anyway, but I hope he get released from, you know, he's not guilty. Yeah. I hope that. But at the end of the day, you see that they don't, money, anything, they don't give a fuck about none of that. They take it that away. It like they got a little bit of evidence though. Evidence is, Somebody could come here and get your birthday, your shoe size, and your car, and tell you a whole bunch of shit. Mm -hmm. You let it wild if you want to, but yeah, it, the mind, the mind is an incredible thing. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So you can't believe everything you hear because the world is built off trying to sell you something. At the end of the day, but he's in a situation that no matter what you got going on in the world, you can't get out of it, mm -hmm. and they're making it like that. You but it should me? be like that. You don't think it should be like that? I mean... I think nobody should be exempt from... I mean, no, nobody should be exempt at all. But this is something that they're... That's new. Like, you don't have to do nothing. Yeah, uh, you heard me? You is listen, like, like, though, think about this. Kind of you doing thing. your podcast right here. Let's just say... Okay, I can't say this. I got a legal weed company. Mm -hmm. Let's just say I was selling weed right here. Mm -hmm. to a nigga so mm -hmm. now you're conspiring with what I'm doing mm -hmm. so now just cause I'm around you and you probably know I sell weed now you could get 10 years for conspiracy just for being around me oh wow you feel me yeah. and if you're not doing nothing two to one you probably gonna tell them like I don't do this. here Michael Taylor you feel yeah. me two to one if you're a businessman but that's how that shit get you trapped and wrapped up so I, I don't fuck with it I'm not hanging around no niggas that's doing shit like that I'm not you no, know, I just separate myself from it because it's not about you no more. It's about how they could get you wrapped up with the people around you. and You ain't got to know shit. Mm -hmm. Real quick, yeah. before you move on, do you think this is going to suppress... Is this, gonna, is this censorship now? Because now rappers are going to be like, damn, I can't express the way I want to express myself in this album because, because I was listening to Menace. And he got me thinking. Like, how's nah, it nigga, art now? If you think about that, you shouldn't be saying that shit in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> if you think about that, nigga, you shouldn't be saying that shit. I just be rapping. That's you be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it always been shit like this. Like even NWA, they was throwing their shit out the, you know, burning their CDs. You feel me? But you know, it's always gonna be something. But this is just a way that they could really just fuck fuck you up. Mm. And it came from the drug game. Now they bring it to the rappers. Yeah. You know? See, really, the drug game was who run the industry. Really, shit, it's really the drugs who really push niggas. <laughs> it's a lot of things running shit. It ain't us. That's yeah. for sure. All right, so um, the Rolling Stone top ten album of the year, albums ever. Do you think they got this right? Rolling Stone top ten though. We're gonna Where do the we top at? ten. What number you on? The, right at the top, all the way down to ten. Do you Radio think they got that? They got that right. Outcast, Jay Z, Public Enemy, Kendrick, Kanye, Messi. I 
Man, they got everybody on here I like. Yeah, I read it, but I seen Except some Nikki people Minaj. I didn't like. I seen some people I didn't like. Except I like, Nikki. I don't know where they should, they should be right there. They could cut Nicki Minaj off of here, but <laughs> everybody else, bro. I ain't got, you know, I don't judge. This is That's like a personal opinion. I don't judge. But Nikki shouldn't, no, I'm fucking. <laughs> <laughs> she shouldn't be nowhere near that page. Not even reading it. Yeah, I think they got. I think they got. There's no Pac in the. T- Tupac. Yeah. I mean, it's 2022 now. It's all timeless though. They got. They got. Uh, but it's probably a nigga that's 22 years old made it. No, they got Eric B and Rock Kim on there. That's 1987. Who made the list though? Hey, if you got Rock Kim on there, you don't have Pac. I don't know. I don't know. He from Cincinnati. <laughs> he a white guy from Cincinnati now. <laughs> but nah, like, I don't know, like, Pac is one of my favorite um, in- entertainers. Not my favorite rapper. You know what I'm saying? Like, Who your favorite rapper? I ain't gonna lie right now. Because I switch up on niggas. But I'm talking about all the time. All the time, Drake. Drake? Drake. Drake. Yeah. Okay. What? Bumpton. He ain't even rapping. <laughs> Drake a beast. Drake a beast. I guess. I guess. See, he just a took beast. over. I guess. Jake I'm like, beast. man, I'm I was sleep, my nigga. Gonna say somebody from the <laughs> or something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, listen. Yeah, nigga. And it happened to be, a, you know, somebody I personally know. And one thing that I go off of is what you talking about real. That's mm-hmm. what I go off of. But it's be talking about some what's some real shit that's going on. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They talk about buying a house next door because the neighbors tripping, but I really bought that house next door because the neighbors was tripping. Like, that's what I follow. I believe. Man, that, 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 I thought that was fake, but he said he really did that. I was like, Facts. wow. <laughs> Facts. That's some cocky ass shit. You know, <laughs> buy the house next door because yeah. they tripping. I just buy y'all shit for y'all out. Nigga. I got to find somewhere else to live. <laughs> Yeah, facts. Y'all own y'all shit. I'm finna buy y'all shit. Y'all keep complaining. You finna show you. <laughs> oh my god, nigga! I was like, oh my god. He's you finna, you finna get a letter saying that we selling the house. And you got <laughs> three months to get up off this motherfucker. <laughs> we selling this place. You gotta move. Like, oh my god. So who's gonna live here, <laughs> Drake? The person you was complaining about. <laughs> <laughs> Percy was sending complaints about he, he's gonna live here now. Nah, yeah, that's what I go off of, man. Believe what's the truth, and and he, you know he just got skills, man. Overall. So what do you got going on for the future? Shit, I really, damn, this would be the first time I said this publicly, but I just really, I signed a deal with Universal probably like a month ago. Oh man, congratulations, so, man. I'm gonna celebrate probably like next week. When you week, already signed to the universe? I was signed Cash Money Universal. Oh, okay. <laughs> signed like, Universal. Hey, <laughs> this is a reverse type yeah. shit. Is this deja vu or something? Yeah. He was already signed to Universal. Yeah. <laughs> no, okay, but, so you just signed the Universal now, not direct, Cash Money Universal. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But oh, it's a, um, a good situation. I'm working on the. I'm working on a deal with Harley Davidson right now. Oh man! So I see you got your uh, what is it? chosen fuse best on man? Oh, man. Street Woods. Street Woods. Yeah. Oh okay. We're, we're, we're part of the chosen few. But okay. Street, Street Woods. Woods. Shout out okay. to the chosen few. Okay. Shout out to both motorcycle clubs, chosen few and Street Woods. Facts. But yeah, so the Harley Davidson deal, that's what I'm working on. I feel it's a good opportunity because. Mm-hmm. To keep it real, the last, like, let's say the last 10 years, the urban community been changing the game for Harley. So mm-hmm. now you can go to Harley directly and get handlebars, the the music, like the pie, everything that, you know, we really, not we really, but everything that we brought to the to the table to change the game. Mm-hmm. So now we're just trying to get with them and uh, make it work. We're going to fuck with them anyway because mm-hmm. we fuck with them. But we trying to get a partnership together, so we got some in the works right now, and we just trying to see how big we could go with it. Shout out to Harley Davidson, 
Shout out to her gang, man. Hey, it's I a lot of shit I'm doing, games, man. man. What else you doing? What else you got going? We doing a um, TV series for the OG Two Tone spin off. Nigga, yeah. me, I'ma watch that shit. So I like OG Two Tone. That's my name. Right. <laughs> it's 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 dope. We getting the trailer done right now, and um, I don't know who we gonna go through Amazon or Netflix. But Amazon, you know, I ain't gonna say that. I don't know if we're gonna go through Amazon and Netflix. But that's another big thing that we're gonna do to, for the West Coast, you feel me? For sure, for sure. I seen the movie John T was in on Tubi, too. I was like, what the fuck, bro? The homie, bro. <laughs> he was uh, playing a nigga homie or something in a little movie and shit. I was like, wow, nigga. The it's homie a lot of room in this shit. Niggas just don't wanna, you know, think outside the box and take their time. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of room in it. Definitely a lot of money. Definitely. That's why I be trying to tell the homies, too. Facts. Man, it's a lot of money in this shit, man. You know, nigga. You ain't got to be out here, you know what I'm saying? Trying to sell shit out here and do all this. Yeah, get right here do this shit. You know what I'm saying? Get some money. Right here. And you ain't going to have the police trying to, you know, take you in jail. <laughs> now, if you do it right, you feel me? Mm-hmm. Now, if you do it right. But, yeah, that's it. And, um... It's just a lot of shit, man. I want to surprise the people, bro. I just want to surprise them. We've been doing this shit too long, so they gotta see us. They gotta see we going into the next gear now. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's basically what I be trying to do. Just show improvement. Every just every time we are gonna do it bigger, we are gonna do it better. Every single time. Mm -hmm. But we can't do it. Every time. What's up with you though? Shit, man. So I got this next mixtape I'm trying to put out. I need an R and B engineer. I keep telling people I'm looking for an R and B engineer who know how to mix my vocals because I'm not putting out no <laughs> more shit. They can't mix my vocals because that piss me off every time. Cause this is really the rap shit. I don't really care how my vocals sound, but my singing shit it pisses me off when it don't sound how I wanted to sound. Yeah. And then they just put it out, and then everybody be like, "Oh, that's that's not. I, I don't even like this shit. <laughs> like nothing that I saw on there because they put it out how they wanted to sound, and I didn't like it. So when I, I find some person who gonna mix it how I want it, and then listen and let me be there when they mixing it, because that's what I told everybody else. Well, you got the platform to definitely find somebody. Yeah, you, you got a company here, so you could definitely get some interns around this motherfucker. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? So I already know, you know, it's gonna be, it's going I just put trust in God, you know what yeah. I'm saying? God gonna make it work soon. Nah, you know what I'm nah, God gonna put you around a bunch of niggas. You got you gotta pick which one. Like, don't just, hey, hey, trust me. God gonna have you broke around his bitch, <laughs> niggas. <laughs> Look out. But, but but at the end of the day, like that that's a big part of the shit right there. Yeah, exactly. You feel me? Exactly. So yeah. I got somebody for you too you probably can fuck with. Oh yeah, that's all I'm finna say. If you got somebody too, nah, you know, to me. His name Ace, he's cool though. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? No good at or the, you know these R and B dudes that be out here doing it with yeah. shit, you know, niggas good. Nah, he's just dope. He, <laughs> Even if he, he, he just want to, this nigga want an R&B. He wants somebody to just record somebody do R&B only. He, he just no, lost faith no, in his rap. Not even R&B only because a lot of dudes that know how to mix rap, they don't know how to mix R&B vocals. Yeah, but certain records you got to get them mixed somewhere else. Yeah. You feel me? But they don't be saying that. They be like, I can do it all. I'm like, if you can't do it all, just tell me where I need to go to get it mixed all the way where I need it mixed. Okay, you got to Listen to some of my shit who you like, they makes right? Mm hmm Depending on the type of music that you're doing. So if you do some West Coast shit, listen to some West Coast shit. If you're doing some um, other, t listen to that. You, then you're going to find out who you're going to need. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it's, it's not as hard as niggas make this shit, bro. This shit ain't. My, oh, my big homie got me. <laughs> my big homie got me. Oh, he don't. Uh, he came back though. That's cool. But no, I, I went to five different places, including Food for Less. Oh yeah. And nobody around this area has has no black people. <laughs> I appreciate you. When you was with the game around the time he was a known famous rapper, what was you guys getting involved in? Well, my first. 
job just around gang was just a street nigga. That was just it. Just yeah. Come hold it down. Just to hold it down. But like I said, just been with that and been able to travel and see the world and and come from where we came through, that that automatically gonna be like, I wanna do this. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like I seen this shit. Like I wanna do this for sure. So that gave me the energy to get motivated behind it. And just get getting to see everything that he went through from becoming the game that the world know. Mm-hmm. And um different just relate everything, relationships, good, bad, burnt bridges, everything. I got to see this shit for it's my time. You feel me? Even dealing with bitches, I got to see it before it's my time. So when it became my time, it was just a whole different situation when when I approached everything. You feel me? Yeah. It was like I already did this shit before when I was just really a fly on the wall, I would say. I felt the same way too when I started because I watched a lot of people. I sat back and watched a couple of the homies. I watched Ed Nail, uh, uh, Sawai. Yeah. I mean, Rip Bandana. Yeah, I was Bandana. Bandana. I, mean, I, I watched a couple of the homies, you know what I'm saying? But J. Rue. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was Shout just, to, just yeah. watching them niggas, you know what I'm saying? Rapping and shit. I was just like, yeah. yeah. Okay, and that's man. what I'm going to say too. And I don't care which one of the homies get mad, my nigga. At the end of the day, <clears throat> this shit about God timing, not nobody else timing. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So. A lot of niggas give up right before their time come. Yeah. And then just not do nothing. Only thing that I haven't did was give up. Mm-hmm. That's it. Every day I'm hustling, working, still doing what I'm doing. So I'm going to stay relevant. Ain't no, ain't no secret to the game at all. Yeah. You feel me? I don't give a fuck what you go through. You're supposed to go through that shit. Yeah. Nigga, God trying to find out if you ready to have a million dollars or not. Exactly. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, ready, you ready for these millions? Exactly. You ready for these millions? That's always looked at it. But shout out to the homies. I ain't saying nothing bad about it. But the only thing I ain't did was gave up. Bro. Exactly. I, I ain't did. I ain't did it neither. Right. You know uh, a couple times, a couple people tried to make me give up. You know what I'm saying? With this little music shit, little shit I went through. But I never gave up. Just kept going. Then I just switch lanes and shit. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I'm gonna switch over here, right here. Leave this alone real quick. Do this other shit, and then switch back over here and do all that shit. But yeah, I just try to never let nobody be able to hold me down and no shit. Like, okay, well you ain't able to do music. Well, if I ain't able to do music, I'm gonna do this shit. And if I ain't able to do this shit, I'm gonna do this shit. And if I ain't able to do that, I'm gonna do some other shit. Do it all. So you can't hold me to nothing, you know what I mean? Because you can't block all the fucking ass bangs. It's like, you can block that, but you can't block that. You can't block that. Do you know it all. Do it all. Did y'all get into any confrontations on the road when y'all was out in these different states? With, with other people or with each other? With each, with each other and other people. Oh, yeah. Always with each other. But, like, I don't know. With the, the energy that I carry... Mm-hmm. I don't have problems on the road. Yeah. You feel me? I don't, I've never, if ne- it's never been a problem on the road to where we was like felt like threatened or anything like that. You probably have words or something with a nigga, but it never got to that energy because I feel like the streets respect where we came from and what we bring to the table and we ain't trying to bully it. We ain't trying to do none of that. We just trying to, you know, we right here. Yeah, you feel me? basically. So I feel like they respect that aspect of how we move. I ain't but never, and we ain't had no problems. Mm-hmm. Moving around none in the world at all. At all. Facts. So it ain't not one time nobody trying to run up on y'all, nothing. No, just not just one time, bro. It's a different vibe. We don't, I don't have that energy. Like, why would you want to run up on me? I mean, not saying per per yeah, and nah. then you, but just your Even somebody the jury, in your entourage. The money, that's cool. Why? Would, like, I'm so cool, bro. Like, you liable to come. You liable to come eat with us tonight. Come, you liable, like you feel me? Like, that's how I move. Yeah. And you know, that's just the energy I have. Mm-hmm. I really feel like before Pac got shot, he said he feel like no black person could do a harm to him. Mm-hmm. I really feel like that. I feel the same way too. I don't, I don't keep that energy to where a nigga can feel, feel away. I don't make people feel away. You feel I me? feel like since I got shot in a, a critical way, I feel like I'm not scared of being shot no more because I know the feeling. Yeah. But the whole thing, keeping yourself out of, uh, 
places where people shoot. I mean, yeah, you still got to keep yourself <laughs> where a nigga can just kill you. You know what I'm saying? That's the whole thing. But I know the feeling, so I'm not scared like I used to be because I didn't know what was going to happen at first. I was yeah. so scared. Like, oh, I don't know if when I get shot, what's going to happen. So since I got shot and I knew what's going to You still don't happen, know. Even though you got shot, you still don't know. I still don't really shot know. Was gonna happen. I still don't really know, but I know how I feel because yeah. I know how I feel when know, I bro. supposedly. I don't even want to hear you sound like you getting comfortable. Like that was cool. No, I'm not saying it was cool, but I'm saying. Or it was. I felt the peace come over it. my body. Okay, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So that lets you know I had to pass away yeah. because I felt the peace. Facts. I felt the nigga it wasn't hurting no more i was going through so much pain before i felt that peace because i told you i was nigga i was in uh had a stroke all kind of shit nigga i was shaking all kind of mm. shit after i felt that peace it was like no more pain it was like just like i was on clouds type shit it was like oh yeah all that pain because you passed out the ambulance came and stuck you with something <laughs> oh, the ambulance didn't come there for an hour what happened i laid there for an hour bro after that I passed out, I was still there for an hour. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No. See, I never been shot though, but these stories right here be I ain't gonna say it's intriguing to me, you feel me? Cause two niggas that I know that been shot, one from the mob and one from the hood. Mm -hmm. It's like um they went through a trance to where like, okay, one of them, Timmy Rue, he said he was in the days. Before he got shot, God like told him like, yeah, it's about to happen. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So that's one person. Now, the big homie, um, I ain't gonna say his name, but you, you know I'm talking. He got shot in the face. Mm -hmm. You feel me? But he said before he got shot that he was in the days too, and God told him like, nigga, it's gonna happen. Don't panic. You feel me? Just relax, and you'll be all right. He said he got out of it, looked around, nigga walking up, shot him in the face. He said he, he relaxed, didn't panic, and you know, he was all right, but that's a whole different experience that niggas go through, you feel me? And that's a yeah. life changer thing for a nigga like that. Yeah, because I had to go through the same thing, even though I felt like I panicked in a sense because I kept trying to get up. Cause that's kind of like a panic. Yeah. Cause I could imagine shit. My, my cousin was there uh, from the hood. Tiny hands. He was he was right there. He was holding me, but he kept telling me to lay down because I was already already fell. But I kept trying to get up, and he like nigga lay on the floor, and they was still shooting. <laughs> it was still bullets flying. Nigga, I was trying to get up and shit because I I don't know what my mind would just keep saying. Get, get the up. fuck out the way, get nigga. Up, yeah. Get the fuck on. You fuck. know what I'm saying? I was like, ah, oh, now nah, I gotta get up and get up out of here. I tell them, we not army niggas, bro. We ain't trained. Exactly, to, we not Niggas trained, start bro. shooting, niggas drop on the knee and start aiming. We ain't, we running first. We can behind exactly. cover. <laughs> like, oh, okay, I do got a strap on me. Exactly, hold on, I do got a good. Okay, I'm start shooting back. The nigga first thought might be, then the homies gonna see me running with the strap, and then that's why. <laughs> I now I gotta start shooting back because I don't want the nigga to be like, oh, nigga, you ran with the yeah. gun. We got a DP in you now. But one thing I said too when I. Start making a little money and shit like that. Like, yeah, I didn't do everything in the hood, but get shot or killed. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So that's what made it easy for me to not be in the hood so much. Because I know that fact right there. Mm -hmm. You get me? And, you know, I'm pretty sure you being shot made you feel the same way. But see, I know why I got, because I did so much in the neighborhood. I was just all around there doing so much. You know, me and the homies, we were just running there all the time, just. We was doing so much. <laughs> it was just like fucking nuisance over there. Just we were just we just robbing everybody. We don't give a fuck who you is. You know what I'm saying? We, we was doing too much. So the police couldn't even catch us. We was getting the fuck on. All shit. The big homies hot. They keep telling us, "Hey man, you got the police running all through this motherfucker yeah. looking for y'all niggas and shit, nigga. Yeah, you niggas. Exactly. <laughs> like, nigga. But it was cool though. You feel yeah, me? but we telling them, nigga, what we supposed to do? We we but, young gangbangers. Yeah, remember what you said earlier. Kiki Roo passed away. I broke your heart, right? Yeah, tore my whole heart. It you still tore my heart. You got shot two different times. Yeah. Okay. So now, I had, and the song is called uh, Crazy Too. And it's really a dream I had. I put in conversation with Jesus, stop taking friends. Mm -hmm. The only thing he told me is stop making friends. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. and now, that came to me because, like, you mad at, Okay, why people, you know, your friends, 
well, guess what? Get your bitch ass out the way because you could be next. Like, exactly. Get out your feelings. Like, this is how life is. This is how it go. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So, you worried about you could be next. It could be you. Basically. You get what I'm saying? That was, so, finna, that was finna happen, too. You that's know how. I was facts. so heartbroken about my nigga being killed, and I was finna be killed, exactly. too. Like, damn, exactly. nigga, I didn't kill both of y'all. That's where I'm good, man, right there. Yeah. So, I'm happy to see you outside of the hood, outside of the rapping, doing mm-hmm. something else, you feel me? To keep you focused yeah. and somewhere else, because that's the most important part of where we came from, being in controlled environments. Mm-hmm. You know I mean? And that's dope. I'm proud of you for that. Thanks, man. Facts. I really, I really, uh, it really because my son, man, you know, I gotta feel like after, uh, you know, I had my son, I feel like I had something to live for. Hell yeah. Because before that, I feel like, you know, Nick, everybody know what I've been through in my little life and shit, but I felt like I ain't had nothing to live for at first. I was like, nigga, shit. I don't give a fuck if I get killed. <laughs> like, shit, so what? You feel me? Until I had my son and I seen him born. You know what I'm saying? It was like, damn, nigga. You go without eating, that nigga can't. Exactly. So I was like, damn, that nigga just, you know, it it changed my heart after that. It was like, nice. I gotta I gotta do something for my son, man. I got a new baby. It costs $28 a day. <laughs> I did the math myself. It cost twenty eight dollars a day <laughs> to feed him to raise a newborn. Twenty eight dollars a day. You want to feed a newborn with twenty eight dollars? Oh yeah. No, I'm saying a day. I know a day, not a week, not yeah. a month. It's a day. That's that's gonna cost you. It's gonna cost you in the end. Day. But yeah, man. The blessing is with, with niggas, you know. Is doing right now, and you know how to maneuver and manage now. You feel me? Mm-hmm. And stay out the way of them bullets. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can never really stay out of the way of bullets because you never know how somebody coming. Well, you know what I'm saying you could just try to stay. You could make the, the odds better. better. Yeah, you can make the odds <laughs> better. Just stay you can make the odds a little better and stay away from you no know, certain areas and stuff. But. Right, and, and I believe sometimes the answers be like, damn. <laughs> you always gotta be friend. That's what I always do. I always you heard be me? Like, damn. I, I'll be thinking, I'll be like, God probably think I'm scary because I'll be praying that nigga all the time. <laughs> like, hey, man, God, watch. No, nope. he's just what, tired of you what, praying when every time you go to jail and don't pray no more when you get out. That's oh, I, 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 was, I was doing that at first. Before I got shot, I was one of them niggas, man. I ain't pray to God at all before I went to jail. They like, go to jail, nigga, nigga jail. every day. Oh, Muslim God. now. No, I didn't be a Muslim, but no, I'm just saying, I was, like how it is. I was, cause I was praying to him all the time, so I might it's as well. Too late, God. <laughs> he ain't gonna open them gates. Even though I didn't join the like the religion in jail, yeah. but I, I was praying to him all the time, like I was. So, you know, right. I wasn't doing none of that on the streets, but as soon as I got in there facing all that time, I was like, man, God, oh right. man, they trying to send me up the river, oh, Lord. <laughs> my little daughter, what's up, baby? Hi, Dad. What's going on, beautiful? What's up, big dog? Are you gonna pick me up from my Is mom gonna drop me off? Is who gonna pick you up from where? Football practice. When? Tomorrow? tomorrow? Oh, Tom, can you drop him off? No, tonight. Check this out. Don't be trying to kick my son out the, out of the house. Oh, that's not me. Where you at right now, Joe? When you want to come with me? Today. All right, tell your mama to drop you off at the house and I'll be over there. I got the, the other helmet is in Compton. I don't have the helmet on me right now. It's in Compton. If I had it on me, you could ride with me right now. No, I don't. Five minutes after I finish this, but you can take him to the house. I'll be there. Uh, yeah, you can keep that up in there. My baby mama's is cool. You feel what I'm saying? I said baby mama. She won't take ass money. <laughs> yeah, so you know, 
It's a 50-50 thing. I was supposed to make that some shit. Yeah, a lot of people, especially right now, they ain't doing nothing without their gas money. Like, no, no, no. I've been on the motorcycle you for about that gas money. Since that, that gas money. went up, it hardly been outside, you heard it? <laughs> so, at the time of your life, you probably was, you know, into like mischief and stuff. What made you change and like start going on the right path? I don't even say the right path, right? Okay. Because I think just we're just staying out of just know. coming up, right? Just coming up, like that's really all I knew. Mm-hmm. That's all we knew was to be like the dominant male, the street street nigga. You feel me? Mm-hmm. But as I grown in the business, even all the shit that we went through with everything that you saw me in, you feel me? That I thought was a good thing at the time because it, my name would be ringing in the streets everywhere so i'm not understanding like or i'm not even going to get the bag that i can be getting because this simple thing that i think that i'm winning off of mm-hmm. because people was excited by hatred and, and, and shit like that so i thought i was winning but i was really fucking all my bags up you feel me so it came to a point where it's hard for me to get money because my liability became more than my price for the show you feel me? So it don't make sense to yeah. fuck me for that. You got to pay fifteen, twenty thousand dollars yeah, insurance, and I'm only like five, eight thousand dollar nigga. Don't make no sense. Don't be losing. Yeah, facts. So once I understood that part, I just it had to really start moving as a, a person that got kids. Like I'm, like I'm the age I am. Instead of acting like I'm trying to be around somebody, uh, I don't know. Just show off, or you know how it is. You mm-hmm. feel me? So that's what really changed it because this is a business and, and and I learn from everything I've been in and I realize all my faults. I'm happy for them. I wouldn't change nothing at yeah. all. I'd do it again. But that's what really changes is growing and, and ain't nobody going to look out for you. Ain't nobody going to help you. Ain't nobody going to do shit for you. Nobody's coming. You feel me? <laughs> so, you got to figure that so, out. Now. Yeah. Ain't nobody coming. Me for realizing you. that. <laughs> I you just had to yourself. be the person that you know th- that I was raised to be, and you get me. I mean, how do you do that around the homies? The homies are very influential, you know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah, but the homies that influenced me made me not be hanging around niggas. Oh, oh okay. That was yeah, influential. You feel what I'm you saying? Know, different the, homies. That yeah, they made me go to practice. Yeah. You feel me? I was gonna say you was a nice ass basketball player. I would have made you go to practice too if I was a big homie at that time. Like, hey, blood, go to practice. So whatever their vision was for that, I thanked them. If they thought I was gonna make it to the NBA and you know give them millions of dollars after that, exactly. thank you for that energy because you know. But I think they niggas forget that this is a business. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So when they mix the street shit and their own personal opinions and their feelings with this business, then that's when it don't work for you. And. I want to do this for the rest of my life, so you know, we gonna we gonna make get music to the rest it. Of your Facts, life. you feel me? If you can, you gonna make music the rest of your life. Not if I can. I'm going to make music. Are you going life. to make music Facts. the rest of your life? Facts. <laughs> hey man, I feel the same way. I feel Facts. the same way. That shit like therapy. It is. It is. That's why I be yeah. trying to tell people. It's basically a therapy. It's not really like everything I go through. Like, I'm gonna talk about it in the song. Every single thing. And that helps me, you feel me? It's mm-hmm. like my own punk secret way of expressing how I'm fit. But you you take it how it is. It's not like directly, you feel me? I don't know. But that's just how I feel. Like, this shit is therapy. I need to be in that environment every single night. I can't, I can't go with that. Even when I record, I need to be around a computer, some speakers. I need to be in that environment. Yeah, I recorded with you before, man. I was gonna say you had me at your understudy before, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I went in, you know, I just sit in the background and watch you record and yeah. shit. It was like just working and you, like even how I record, you you know, it, it's just I learned hey, I learned from you too. I started recording yeah. how you I, you didn't know you was teaching me because you probably did because you that's know that's why you had me as your understudy. I was the fly on the wall. I learned I started recording like that too, so my shit started sounding better now because I learned that from you. It was like, okay, I'm gonna do this how the homie was doing that yeah. shit because it's how the homie did and his shit was coming out like his shit was extra clean. Yeah. Like nigga. Yeah. 
the, like the main thing is confidence. That's the uh, that's the confidence. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you got confidence. You you dope. You believe what you're saying. Believe what you're doing. You're gonna project it. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Like another artist could go in the booth and spit some hard shit and come out and act insecure about it and get a um a different reaction that I'm going to get because I'm going to come out like it's the best shit in the world, nigga. You ain't heard that. Exactly. You didn't hear what I said. You feel me? Yeah. You and now, nigga, be, you probably, that's just a, a part of it, but mm -hmm. it's work with it. And what I like to do is make artists get comfortable with themselves. You feel yeah. me? So that means but freestyle right now. Okay, now they're going to do it. First, they was insecure about doing it. You feel me? Mm -hmm. But that's the one part of building your artistry and building who you are. You feel me? And I've been through the shit in this 95 Death Row. That's what it is. Yeah, man, it was crazy because I was around when Death Row was, uh, you know, because I lived in the manners. Yeah, that had that bad. That's where the projects. <laughs> Cross street from the Compton Swap Meet. Mm -hmm. I lived in there. So, nigga, shootouts going on, that motherfucker, all kind of shit going on, business. Facts. All kind of shit up in there, you know what I'm saying? So, Facts. And then uh, Tupac came to uh, Foster Elementary. When yeah, I was going there, and gave, and shit. Yeah, gave toys out to all the kids and Facts. shit, you know, was going there. And shit. Himself. Himself. We shook hands with him all that. Facts. I was like, take a picture with him and shit. I, I asked my mama, where that picture go? I'm like, I took a picture with Tupac, you that's, know what I'm saying? That's why I study Tupac, because of a person, right? Yeah. Even a gangster, like, everybody think or say he a gangster. He ain't a gangster. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And that's dope. That's how a lot of us grew up. Exactly. But we still got that in us though. Exactly. You know I mean? So that was dope. That's what yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was real dope because that that was a memory I still remember from being a kid right. in elementary school. I was like, wow, Tupac. You feel me? Gave us some toys. So. You gonna remember it, and that's it. So now you remember that too. So you you know anything a fan want you see a fan. I don't give a fuck what you going through. Exactly. So I know I got to give them a memory. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Oh, let me do this real quick. They going to memory forever. That's what it's about. Remember the nigga did this. Do extras. <laughs> I ain't going to take nothing out your time. Real shit. Real shit, man. Yeah. What's the name of the thing? This Town Business Podcast. All right. What radio? What's one of the main ones? The camera? Yours is this one right here. For sure. So listen. We're going to have fun with this, all right? Mm -hmm. So just do it. How I'm doing it. Okay. And try and do it better. And we're just gonna go All back right. and forth looking at each camera. Okay. No, yours, this is yours. Okay. Yes. Yeah. This, this, this is Menace. I got you. All right. You already know what it is. It's Compton Menace. You're now tuned in to Town Business Podcast. Make sure you check in every day. I was not finished talking. I was not, see? Man, you fucked me up. Go ahead. <laughs> I was waiting. I thought I was supposed to. I thought <laughs> no, you have fun with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, uh. See? Damn. <laughs> what you saying in the beginning? See? Niggas, yo shit. And Nigga, what you mean what no, I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you didn't fuck me up and shit. I was like, damn, I forgot what I was going to say in the beginning. <laughs> okay, I was going to say that. Okay, now that's it for the Town Business Podcast today. Y'all can follow me on. Uh, no, uh -huh. don't say it like you're reading. I'm not reading. I know, but you oh, sound no, like you read. Like, okay, okay, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Town Business Podcast, Count the Menace, Stoner from the Town. You can follow me on Instagram at Top Shotta, M R, Mr. Top Shotta, M R. T O P S H A. It's gonna be on the bottom of the screen, y'all. Don't worry yeah, about it. It's yeah, gonna be on the I'll bottom. It's a new page. <laughs> other page. Uh, uh, starting from the town got hacked. So if you didn't know, you know now. Uh, and we are done for the day. Yeah, gotta win, can't never lose. Cause if a nigga lose, I'ma have to pull. Chopping up your block with the fucking toe. Laying niggas down, hide me on the nose. Niggas bought it all. Oh, if you ain't down the slide, you can't be in ball. If you ain't hit the block, niggas slang it wrong. If you ain't catch the top, try to take it all. We get it bragging, nigga, where we are. 40 or the Ruger, bitch, we carry y'all. If you hangin' with the ops, we gon' marry y'all. Catch a double body, double carry y'all.